Hello and welcome to a series of A-level lessons on applications generation. Today we're going to take it nice and simple. Lesson one will be about application software. So not too difficult. We'll get a lot more complicated as we go through this series. But today we are going to keep it simple and stick to the basics. Let's start with some definitions. So today we're going to be looking at application software. Software that basically allows the user to do or make something. In the previous set of A-level lessons, we looked at system software. And this is the software that runs the hardware. That's your operating system, your device drivers, your utilities, things like that. So if you want to know more about system software, please consult uh, an earlier series of videos. Application software is that which allows the user to perform a task or to produce something. People tend to think of applications in terms of the software they use on a daily basis. So we're thinking about things such as word processors, spreadsheet packages, presentation software, desktop publishing, image editors, web browsers, computer-aided design packages, management information system games, all kinds of different programs, different software, different applications that we use when we use our desktop or laptop or tablet or smartphone or whatever else. An important point is to not get confused between a type of application software and the name of a particular piece of software. So for example, Microsoft Word is an example of a type of word processor. Although Microsoft Word is fairly ubiquitous, there are other products that you could use. You could use Apple's Pages, Google Docs, uh, LibreOffice Writer. There are lots of different word processors you can choose on depending on cost, hardware, compatibility, and features. So in the exam, if you get a question and it's about somebody who's going to be using a spreadsheet package, don't talk about Excel. You've got to say spreadsheet or spreadsheet package or spreadsheet application. If you use the kind of specific brand name, you're not going to get marks. Another point for the exam is that you're going to get some questions that seem almost too easy. What do I mean by that? Well, you get a situation like this is a scenario. Billy is an accountant who uses computer systems as part of his job. List three types of soft, sorry, three types of application that Billy would use. And some students get stuck with this because they'll be like, well, we haven't actually studied specific accounting software or software that this person would use, or software that that person was, would use. They're just looking for generic software. Billy would use a spreadsheet package to enter financial data. Billy would use a word processor to send his clients letters. So if it's a list question, you just have to kind of list the types. If it's um, kind of an explanation question or a description, you might need to contextualize it. But that contextualization is really easy. Uh, Billy would need to use a web browser to research information for clients, something like that. doesn't have to be too complicated. As the speed of internet access increases and processing power becomes cheaper, it is becoming increasingly common for some applications to become cloud-based. So this is when the software isn't on your own hard drive or your own SSD on your computer. The software is actually running on another computer somewhere in the internet and you're accessing it through your web browser, okay? So that is something that's becoming increasingly popular in recent years, and it's something that's good to know about for the exam, and I'm sure you've used a lot of applications like this yourself, maybe even without knowing about it. The advantage of this is that by accessing applications over the internet, users don't have to worry about installation. It's not gonna use up their storage space, especially a lot of tablets and smartphones don't have a lot of storage. Even some of the cheaper laptops that you might buy, like a Chromebook or a cheap uh, Windows-based laptop, might only have 64 gigs or 128 gigabytes of storage. It's not very much. So by having your software stored on the cloud, you just use your web browser to access it, you don't need to use up a lot of your limited storage. This is sometimes referred to as software as a service or SaaS, SaaS. So you probably use this in your school, something like Microsoft Office Live, especially if you're using a Teams-based environment in your school. You might have used something like Google Docs. Google provides a lot of Office software online. You also have a lot of quite professional software online that you can use, things like the Adobe Cloud, where again, the software isn't running or being stored on your computer. The software is running on somebody else's computer and you're just accessing it through the web browser. 
That's everything you need to know about for today. Keeping it very simple will get more complicated as we work through these videos. Have a good day and good luck with your studies.